Hello everyone, and welcome back to episode 32 of Katara Shoujo. So, let's begin. Sounds pretty terrible. Yeah, especially now I have to search the whole city library for it. Well, the whole library for it. Even if that's probably not here. You say Billy. A little. She dashes off down another aisle, and I resign myself to finding my own damn book. Hmm. Plenty of choices. <coughs> oh, come on, how did I get lost? These aren't even printed books. They're all in braille. Guess that makes sense in a school like this, but honestly, it's a little annoying. I'm sorry, is someone there? A Lilvin, vo a Lilvin, Lilvin voice drifts out of, from behind one of the cubicles set up for research. As I approach, I see that Lily has been reading a book while I've been stomping about the aisles. Oh no, I should be apologising. Didn't mean to make so much noise. No, is that you, he said. I've not heard from you for in quite some time. I was beginning to think you'd forgotten all about me. Uh, sorry. Lily laughs in a refined manner of hers and shakes her head. I'm only teasing you, he said. From what I hear, you've been busy. Morning run with Emmy Burazaki and lunch on the rooftop, on, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yeah. Guess work gets around pretty quick here. That and I can't coax poor Hanako on the roof anymore. You three are always up there, claiming the spot for yourselves. She chides me gently, but it's pretty clear she's just teasing me again. Still, I feel an odd need to apologise. Sorry. Could eat lunch somewhere else again if it's a real problem. Oh no, I wouldn't worry about it. Hanukkah and I have other things to do at lunch too. Such as reading the library, as you can see. Oh, Hanukkah's here too. Didn't see her. Really smiles a bit enigmatically. Oh, she's around here. Somewhere. I'm surprised, he said. You're in here instead of up there. What brings you to the library? Well, Emmy's ill, so there's no lunch on the rooftop to keep me occupied. Lily, Lily raises an eyebrow at my statement before giving me another chuckle. My, poor Rin must feel left out. It's not like that. Ah, but I'm sure it isn't. Emmy tends to be the life of whatever group she's in. It's a shame to hear she's fallen ill. Will she be okay? Somehow I get the feeling Lily's just inquiring out of politeness I respond endingly. The nurse thinks so. Gonna swing by and see how she's doing after school myself. Another raised eyebrow. My, what a noble gentleman you are, he said. Oh no. Oh, what's it? Yes, I'm a gentleman. Cool. Now we're not going down that rabbit hole. To die. Some other time. Maybe. It's nothing, really. Just checking up on my friend after all. Ah, so it's just a friend, is it? How disappointing. I blush. Glad that Lily can't see it. Taking advantage, geezer. Why are you doing that? But somehow she knows I've been flustered by her comment anyway, and laugh. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lisa. I'm teasing you again. Please do tell Amy that I hope she feels better, won't you? A glance at my watch reveals that I'm very nearly out of time to find my book. Of course. I, I've got to find my book before lunch is over, so I'll better get moving. See you later. That's probably not the best phrase to use. Lily, however, takes my gaff and it's in gaff and stroke. Tell me again, he said. I'll never do find the book I was looking for. But I walk out with something else instead. My stomach growls slightly, letting me know that I should have had something to eat. Oh well. I'll grab something before I visit Emmy later. Seems as if time has decided to slow down for the express purpose of annoying the hell out of me. Well, I feel like I'm dragging on for ages. Oh, like two trucks. Well, I feel like I'm dragging on for the day. Cool. Specific. Mm, specific. Mm. Not today. I suspect that my 
being consumed with worry probably has something to do about it. Less, less you believe why the bell rings, I, and I dash out. Let, no, sorry. Less you believe the bell rings, and I dash out of class. During a few raised eyebrows, I'm sure. I spent the majority of the day fretting over as unobtrusively as I could. Even though the nurse thinks that Emmy is perfectly okay, I want to see for myself. It doesn't take too long to get me up to the girls' dormitory and make my way through his room. Standing outside her door, I suddenly pause while she's resting. I'd hate to wake her up, especially if she's feeling ill. Then again, if she sleeps all day, then it could throw off her sleeping schedule. The rest is important if you're ill, isn't it? Can't decide to what to do, so I settle for standing outside the door, looking like an idiot. Then I hear Emma's voice from behind the door. Thanks for your concern. I'm really okay. Is she talking to me? I'll see you at practice tomorrow. Guess not. Still, clearly, clearly she's not asleep, so I can knock without worry. So why this clenched feeling in the gut? Wasn't I wasn't nervous about dropping by the other day, so why today? Granted. Still haven't really had time to figure out this newfound interest in Emmy's well being. Don't have a lot of experience in the matter, of course. But certainly this seemed to go beyond feelings of mere friendship. Could I take that step? Could I even bring myself to risk what I have right now? I mean, it's enough to be friends with her, ain't it? Either way, shouldn't I just open the door and see how she's doing? That's why I came here, right? Why she's not dressed yet? The image of flashes through my mind, causing my heart to skip a beat, literally. I should probably not ever think those thoughts again, like I want to avoid a heart attack. Suddenly realise I'm standing in the hallway, looking like an idiot. Now he still seems to be in the middle of the conversation, but I'll knock anyway. Hopefully she won't mind the interruption. You worry too much. Come in, the door's unlocked. So it is. I open the door and step in. Which is about where my thought process comes to a grinding up. Let me sit up in her bed. Her hair tussled, uh, tussled from the day of sleep. I think this is the first time I've seen her without those familiar beads in her hair. Her gym, sh her gym shirt and bloomers are obviously hastily pulled on before I came in and creased and folded from the less proper storage. Her leg lay bare on the sheets. You know, this is getting a bit. This is getting a bit on low. I've never seen Emmy without prosthetics before, yet yeah, here she is. Slender legs terminating in stumps just below her knees. But as odd as the sight is, I find myself more captivated by everything north of the waist. And let us. Oh wait, wrong one. Yep, let us just observe the sea. GI for the time being. Oh, it loomed out as well. It's a nice detail. Well, we can obviously now continue. It seems that Emmy has finished her conversation with whoever she was on the phone with her. Who was on the phone with her, and now she's watching my reaction closely. Out of her one, uh, one open eye as she wipes sleep from the other. Her expression, far from being embarrassed, is rather one of surprisingly wide yawn. One perhaps appropriate from such a small amount now. A grin that for a brief moment seemed to almost almost flirtatious, tug at the corner of her mouth. She takes the sight of me in to do nothing but remain in a state of fluctuating between fear, confusion, and not a little bit of awe. Don't do it, my friend. Emmy hastily sweeps her out of her eyes, fixing it back into place before addressing me. And this is where I'll end it for the time being. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll continue next time. Goodbye.